Hey everyone, this is Daniel Upper. I'm here with Paul DuPont. We are going to be doing a fantastic story. This is the first and the premiere episode of Hard Lens Media here on YouTube. We've got a lot of stories coming at you. Paul, why don't you start us off? So, this past week we had uh, some interesting votes on the, well, an interesting vote on the rules for the Democratic House, and Nancy Pelosi is going to get what she wanted and reinstating, in reinstating PAYGO. So if you don't know what PAYGO is, PAYGO is basically a rule set um, that the Democrats are sort of making for themselves to say, if we're going to propose any type of legislation, it has to be budget neutral, right? You can't add anything to the deficit. It can't cost any money unless it's offset either by cutting other programs or by raising tax revenue. Um, this is something that the sort of centrist establishment wing of the party really likes and really wants. Um, because it sort of hamstrings these incoming, uh, very progressive, very leftist uh, uh, House representatives that want to do things like Medicare for All or a Green New Deal or um, any of these things, sort of infrastructure spending. This sort of like, we need to have a, a, you know, an influx of cash into the well-being of actual Americans, and if you have to combine that with how do you offset those costs, then it makes it really hard. Now, it's at least an upgrade from what the Republicans had sort of had instituted, which was sort of a, what they called cut go, which is you can't even do it by tax increase. You have to do it by cutting a different program. You can't increase taxes at all. But it almost doesn't matter because if you have to include a tax increase somewhere to offset something else, it's already going to make it politically difficult to make that happen anyway. It's sort of a self-inflicted wound on trying to get any of those policies done. Yeah, so I think that this is something that uh, only a few Democrats actually fought against when it was there. You had, um, I believe it was um, AOC uh, was against this. You had, who else was against this? Ro Khanna and Rashida Tlaib. Those were the only three votes against it. So like, this was something that was put in kind of under, people didn't see it coming. It was very- We very saw it coming. We've well, been talking about this for a couple of weeks, we but have, like it hasn't gotten main coverage until just now because they just had the vote. Yeah, but it was mm -hmm. a very interesting thing because, you know, Pelosi has just gotten herself reelected as House leader mm -hmm. and it was very contentious and she had some opposition. And it's interesting to see that she's doing this, putting this bill in, because this is something that, just like Paul said, is going to hurt the chances of progressive legislation that is being put down. Because you have to also, as you said, put in exactly how you're going to pay for it, whereas when this was done with uh, taxes or, or tax cuts, it wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. So this guy, um, Waleed Shaheed, who's a communications director for the Justice Democrat, uh, D Justice Democrats put it really well in a statement he made to The Intercept. This is an Intercept article that actually was just before the vote, I think. But he says, there's enormous appetite in the Democratic Party and among all Americans for major public investment to tackle our nation's major crises, uh, deepening inequality and structural racism and climate disaster. Uh, Pelosi and the Democratic Party leadership's support of PAYGO makes act actually solving these crises all but impossible. The Democratic Party leadership is unilaterally disarming and shooting themselves in the foot. And he's absolutely right. Um, there's just sort of no way that you can sort of get these things done if you have to also offset this kind of thing. And uh, it's, it's really sort of a thumb in the eye of these new progressives, these new sort of leftists that are coming in uh, to the party and trying to get things done. And literally the things that they campaigned on are the things that they're getting stifled on. It's, it's an artificial barrier for them. When it, and it's so mind boggling because this is, these are not only the, you know, the policies that these people campaigned on, but this is also you know, the, the will of the voting public, right? The, like 90% support for um, a policy like Medicare for all amongst Democratic voters, 90% support and like 70-ish percent support if you include Republican voters, like amongst all voters in America. So these are very populist ideas. And this is the party that's sort of meant to represent the everyman, right? The Labor Party, America's version of the Labor Party, sitting there saying, we can't have these things that you want. Yeah, so I think that the, another point of this is now that we're getting to where Nancy Pelosi is and what she's doing is this is something that is, just like Paul said, it's stifling the progressive movement. And we have to remember that Nancy Pelosi, one of the things that she says that she's fantastic at, and she says it quite often, is she's an amazing fundraiser. 
And if you have the mentality of, I'm the leader of the party, my job needs to be fundraising, that means a couple things. That means, first of all, that you need to take the most amount of money from corporations, because that's who has the money in this country. And second, once you take that money, uh, that's where you have legalized corruption, because then you can pay, oh, you need help in a race. Well, I'll help you out in doing that if you do these things for me. So it allows fewer people in a Democratic Party to control more of the party, which of course, isn't that helpful if you want to call yourself a Democratic Party or the Democratic Party? Par for the course, for the, the course. undemocratic party there. Yeah, so we have a situation where PAYGO, in its in its current form, the way it exists, is something that's put forward by Nancy Pelosi. There's no way she doesn't know what's in her own bill. She's very intelligent. She knows what she's doing. We don't, unlike perhaps other channels, we treat her as if she knows exactly what she's doing because she does. She just happens to align herself with different interests than what we think uh, she should be aligned to, such as not the people versus being supportive of the people. Mm -hmm. So PAYGO in itself uh, kneecaps progressive policies, even though it's not like Trump's going to pass them. It's not like the Senate's going to pass them if they're passed. Uh, and the entire purpose of what they are supposed to be passing is the House has been passing nothing. And so it's very easy for Trump and the Senate to go, well, nothing's passed. We're not going to do anything. We can just sit on our hands and we can yell at the opposition. Whereas the strategy they should be taking, it seems like they're sort of taking steps towards, but not all the way, is if we start putting very popular bills and McConnell continues to not push it, then they can go on TV, they can go on all these other places and say, hey, we're trying to make your life better, America. Look at us trying to do these things. Here's a bill that we're trying to pass. Here's another bill that we're trying to pass. The Republicans are blocking it. Now you can't have a better life because they are playing politics and not passing. Then it makes it very hard for Republicans to fight back against that. It makes it very hard for them to defend their non-action. And it gets people who think the Democrats aren't doing anything to go, oh, look at that, they're doing something. And conversely, it takes Republicans who also agree with many of these plans to go, yeah, why aren't my representatives passing it? I want that. And then you have to have situations, which we've already seen with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, where they have to defend popular ideas and tell you not to vote for them, which isn't that successful when it's like, remember with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, it's like, what does she want? Healthcare for everyone, public financing of colleges. It's like, it's like things, right, those are great things. Like, things that are popular. Right. So it puts the Republicans on a defensive point to have to defend to not do things which their own constituents want. And the Democrats get to say, look, we're going to be there to change your life. Right, so here's sort of the the other part of what you're saying is it's the Democrats that are now taking a conservative talking point and using it against themselves, right? This whole, we need to be deficit neutral, we can't balloon the deficit, we have to be fiscally responsible. Where do I keep hearing fiscal responsibility from? Oh, that's right, Republicans. Why are we trying to do that? That's their BS talking point that they always go to. And we know historically when Republicans are in power, they spend out the wazoo. Right? One of the major things we could do to increase revenue is just reverse the Trump tax cuts. That's like $3 trillion over a period of, what, 10 years? That's a giant tax windfall just getting rid of those tax cuts, which they ignored their own cut-go rules to put through. Yeah. Like they, they always balloon the deficit. They always campaign on we need to be deficit neutral. Oh, my goodness, the deficit. Oh, the deficit, the deficit. And then when they're in power, they just spend, 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 spend. And they go, look at those Democrats. They don't respect the deficit. And now we're doing it to ourselves. We're going to take a line out of their paybook and be like, oh. And I've heard this argument, and this really gets under my skin, from sort of Democratic Party inside think folks will say, right, but don't we need to show Republicans that we can be deficit neutral? Don't we need to take the, the high ground here and be fiscally responsible and show them that their talking point is BS and that we can do it better than they can? No. Because they're never going to actually govern in a fiscally responsible way. They're just going to use that talking point, and it's never going to go away. No matter how fiscally responsible Democrats try to be, Republicans will continue to smear them as the ones that inflate the deficit, as much as a BS talking point as that is. And I want to say this, I think this will be the last point. I want to apply this to people's everyday life. Because you, because you can, just like Paul said, it's a kind of a ethereal to talk about it with government. But let me give an example. Let's say you want to buy a house. Try doing that under PAYGO. You have to basically pay the house in full when you buy it. You can't take out a loan. You can't pull out a mortgage because that would be against PAYGO. So a house, which many people consider an investment in their family's future, 
Under Pago would never happen. We would not have home ownership because you'd have to have six hundred thousand dollars on hand. That's right. Just raise your revenue. Just you know, earn a couple million this year to afford the home you want. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. everyone does Save that. Just up. flip a switch, and this year you're going to make the you know five hundred thousand dollars that you need for the home or whatever. Just save up twenty thousand dollars a year for twenty years, and then you'll be able to afford the house that costs four hundred thousand now. That costs six hundred. Oh wait, no, now it's inflation oh, yeah. and the market's mm-hmm. changed. So you gotta wait another ten years for six hundred. Oh no, wait, now it's seven hundred thousand dollars because of market forces. So this is the issue that we're having. You can't make investments in the future without taking on a loan, just like. Every company does. A company wants to expand. They take out a loan. This is the Democrats saying, maybe not to the Republicans' point of view, where you have to cut costs so you can't eat food for five years so you can afford your house, which is perhaps much worse, but saying you have to already have the house paid for before you buy it. And try and do anything investment-wise with that mentality. This is doubling down on austerity. That's exactly what it is. And I I don't know. I've said this before, but austerity just doesn't work like we just keep saying it's going to work and it keeps not working it keeps only propping up the already established already wealthy institutions it just it basically helps protect the already wealthiest at the expense of everyone and, uh, even use... and that's what this is this is this is a mechanism to reinforce austerity measures and i want to say on top of that even perfectly going with that explanation going back to housing you know who can afford that six hundred thousand dollar house People with $600,000 to right. spend. People at the top. 